Alright guys, uh, hope you're well. Um, this is, if you're into radio control, you probably know what this uh, little three-wheeled trike is. It's the uh, X-Rider. Uh, it's called the Flamingo. Now, I bought this um, oh, probably a year ago, something like that, because I watched a video uh, of the Ape which is the three-wheeler that I use on uh, all different sorts of circuits, rallies and stuff like that. Uh, and they take out the little motorcycle engine in the back and they put in like an under 600 or I think even a high booster engine. And if you ever get a chance to uh, look up on uh, Google or YouTube, look up um, like uh, eight three-wheeler or eight trike or something like that. Uh, they are absolutely awesome. I'm telling you, they, they're... I could, when I watched it, I couldn't believe how quick they were and how they handled, you know, for a three-wheeler and stuff like that. And the engines, just that. If you love engines, but, you know, the way they flip me through the gears, you know what motorcycle engines are like, you know. They're just, you know, they rev, you know, into insanity. They're just crazy things. But anyway, uh, so, yeah, I bought that and I was very underwhelmed with it, you know. <laughs> it was um, pretty slow. And it just kept tipping over onto it, you know, it sort of tips over onto these like little metal pieces here. Um, well, it, it pressed and the suspension was a bit stiff, uh, you know. It went for ages and, you know, but it wasn't what I really wanted. Uh, the original one's got a, like a, a little cartoon man that, that sits in here. I haven't put it in yet. Um, it goes in there uh, and he's on like spring loaded so his head kind of wobbles around it's quite amusing type of thing you know but um, I sort of changed mine to a stick radio because I can't stand steerable radios you know sometimes you have to like my um, lossy bike now that comes with a stick radio now you know, it's got so much technology in that bike and from the transmitter, it's going to be a nightmare to uh, change that over. Um, I'm hoping I can. I've got a guy, uh, a friend of mine, uh, he is kind of looking into trying to change it to a stick radio, um, which I hope he has some success with uh, and he can sort of pass it on to me so I can use that bike. There must be a way of doing it. Um, he is the man to do it. Um, so I'm waiting on him now to, you know, get rid of the steerable radio and um, go on sticks. So anyway, I changed this to uh, um, a stick radio, you know, didn't make it go any better. So I thought I'd have a look and see what I could do. So this one's a little bit different. Uh, may look the same, you know. Uh, I do want to go down and brush this route, you know, it's still electric and it's still light. If you watch all my videos, normally I see I'm not a great fan of electric. It, you know, it's convenient and easy and all that, but oh, I just find the models have got no soul. They're sort of like, a, they're not alive, you know, running on electric motors, you know. Anyway, enough of that. So, I thought I'd go about changing this one. Um, I don't know if you can see what's in there. Yes, you're right. I thought I'd fit a little Nitro 07 engine in there. You know, a bit of a squeeze, but uh, I'm never scared of a bit of a challenge. Uh, I find it quite satisfying to try and change stuff. Now, I've got this little 07 engine. Now, these engines, there's some good ones and there's some bad ones. Now, if you've got the um, the MB-16 came out years ago uh, and had a little 05 engine in it and no matter what you try to do with that engine, trying to tune it or anything like that, it was just horrendous. You did get no power out of it at all. You know, I tried everything, changing carburetors and everything, and it was just crawl around. It was just, it was just starved of uh, the pulp timing or whatever it was, fuel, whatever, and it was absolutely useless. Uh, I think I sold it in the end, I sort of blinged it all up. So, years later, Turnergy brought out another thing called an MB16, not an Acme 5, uh, 5 engine, but this is a, a Turnergy, it's not marked up what engine it is, but it's an 07 engine, 
and it's got dual needles. So you've got a low running needle and you've got a high running needle. Now, I was very skeptical of this engine because it's got the same type of exhaust, um, all that kind of thing. But when a mate of mine brought one round, I think it was in a truckie or something, I couldn't believe how it read. It was an incredible little engine, you know. And since then, I actually bought a turnkey buggy, which has gone on and on and on. And, uh, you know, it, I don't hardly use it now because, you know, um, the guy I used to uh, go out with and racing around, he, he's sort of lost interest in most of the RC stuff now. And it sort of sat on my shelf for ages. Well, I also put, I think if you go through my videos, um, I've got an OTO eight scale bike and I managed to squeeze one of these engines into an eight scale bike and it went really well. Um, and I, I was thinking of making a, another one because I sold it to a friend of mine, a uh, Kay in, in, in Canada, um, who loves the bike, you know, and I've been after trying to get it back, but, um, it, you know, she don't want to sell it to me, so I'm kind of uh, stuck, maybe I'll make another one because I bought this engine off eBay, it's hard to come by, uh, and I bought this one off of eBay, it's been used or whatever, but it's got good compression and stuff like that. So I kind of thought, well, I'll, what do I do? Put it in another oak scale bike, because I've got another OTO, just sitting there doing nothing. Uh, and I thought, no, I looked at the ape and I thought, well, I wonder if I can squeeze that in there, you know. Um, so that's when it started doing. I had the bike and the engine one side of me, and I had the ape three-wheeler trike, you know, on the next side of me, on the left, and I thought, well, any, medium, mighty, mo, that's, you know, I've already done a bike, uh, and I probably will do another one, because there's an engine on eBay now that um, I'm looking at, and it's the same one as this, uh, but a guy wants a bit too much money for it, so I'm just watching it and seeing how that's going. But anyway, back to this trike. Now, you know, it's a tiny little thing to get a motor in. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what I've had to do. I'll just take that. I wanted it to look exactly standard, which hopefully it is. Um, right. And what we've got here, I've made this little gearbox. Can you see a little gearbox there? Now those gears are out of a two-speed gearbox for the MB16 little um, truggy and little buggy. But it only changes gear once. <laughs> and then it strips all the gear, all the teeth off the gears. So, you know, it would have been a great idea because they rev so high and the two-speed box was, was great. And it only cost about a tenner or something. It was so cheap. But it only changed once and that was the end of it. So um, I had a few gears laying around. So I thought I want to keep the engine in the centre of the model. Because the electric one was like over to one side. So I wanted to keep it in the centre. So I thought, well, I'll keep it on line with the rear. I can see it just in there. That's the rear gear, which I've actually changed and put a smaller one on. So... What I did, I made like a little um, idle uh, gear set in there. So we've got kind of a clutch bell, which is running to a bigger gear. And then it goes down to a small gear and it runs to a slightly larger one, which is on the differential. Now, I had to twist the diff round because it was going around the wrong way. Um, I made these two alley carriers up here. These two carriers, so they're ball raced uh, front and back. Um, I had to do a lot of work on the screws. So we've got these two screws here and these two screws here. They hold the actual, these two alley, uh, what do you call them, uh, mounts. So they're the gear mounts, uh, ball raced. Um, we've got that gear, I can't remember the teeth on it now, but. Um, that was one of the, I think that's one of the original uh, two-speed uh, gears. So I might to make some lay shafts, you know, sort of thing, harden them, put flats on them, grab screws. Um, and I had to make a little plate for the engine to fit on, which is, where are we? These four screws there. So those four screws hold a little plate on because 
right in the way. I, I wanted to mount it kind of straight onto the chassis, but I couldn't because these holes were like halfway, exactly where, you know, the mounts should have been. So I couldn't pull it there. So that's why I had to make a plate. So I've got a plate bolted on there. Then I've got the engine bolted onto that plate. And I can, I've slotted the hole so I can move it backwards and forwards. So eventually I got kind of it all lined up and the gear was running free. Um, you know, and, and that was one bit done. It took me like a week or so. Uh, and the, probably the next most difficult bit was actually the brake and the throttle side of things. Now I bought, I think it's a little Savok servo. Yeah, a little Savok servo in there because they're quite a good little servo and they're very powerful. Um, and I've tried lots of different ways to get that in because I had no clearance. You know, like you can see I've had to grind bits away. Uh, where this rod goes across the carburetor, I've had to grind bits away from there. So um didn't have a lot of clearance to get stuff in, but eventually I worked out how to do it. And I don't think you see, if, if you look in there, that's where my finger's pointing, you can see they're the brake calipers uh, or the brake plates, if you like. And I've got a disc brake inside. Um, and this is off the old two-speed box. Now I managed to, because that had the disc brake on it and it had these pads, you know, brake pads in there as well. So I've managed to sort of, sort of get them together on the ends, you know, cobble them together on the end of that. So that's mounted with them two screws there. So I've got one, this one goes over, where are we? This one goes over to the brake uh, arm, which works a cam, which operates a brake, it works really well. And this one goes over to uh, the carburetor, which works a car. I think I've got it switched on. Uh, yeah, so you can see backwards for the brake and forwards for the throttle. Uh, we've got the steering, you know, which is on there. Now, that was kind of, I thought was going to be the difficult bit, but no. The sort of difficult bit was this here, this part here, let's move the pull start. This, you can see where I've cut it off. Right, now I've cut it off there, all the way down. This went back probably another 50 mil, kind of went back to the other side there. It went back to there. So there's no way I could kind of get this back to where it should have been because it's all kind of, this is a plastic bar that goes across there, you can see it. And this is where this bit mounts on to the floor. So I had to mount that onto the floor and then see what I got left to cut away. So I ended up cutting all the way down there so I could get the engine, or I mean, get the steering and the front part, this chassis, to get the front, you know, forks and everything back, because I wanted to keep it as it was. Now, I've actually made, you can see two, there's two rods that go up here, two metal plates go up there. Now they screw to the top there, and they screw down to two plastic brackets uh, let's see if I can get in a view there. Maybe turn it round a bit better. Mm, yeah. They go down into two plastic brackets. You can see it following from up there all the way down to brackets. So that su supports this front end. Otherwise, you know, it, and I've got a gap in between the head and the servo. So that kind of, kind of worked out okay, but that took a long while to actually work out. Um... So that goes right. I've got a, a little Spectrum part flyer receiver in it. Uh, I made my own shocks for it, so it's got old field shock on the front. And I, I bought these um, X Rider rear dampers. Uh, worked really well. And now I've got a little bit of actual weight in the car. Uh, track, whatever you want to call it. Um, we've got a much better, you know, you can press it in the middle and everything goes down together. So, 
you know, it's very, very well balanced. Um, I have run it, um, but it's a little bit low geared. She screams a little bit. Uh, I'm hoping um, to get it out again because it was only a quick run. I, I might post it on uh, my channel because it's, it's one of them things where you think, oh, I just put my phone down on the floor and up against the curb and get a little video of it running. But, you know, I ended up knocking the phone over, blah, blah, blah. But you can hear the engine, like how it's screaming. Um, but overall, uh, it was such a nice thing to drive. It was so much fun. Um, and the handling was so much better. With a little bit of weight in it and all the suspension working properly, you could go around corners fairly, fairly quick. Um, and it wouldn't like roll over. It wouldn't kind of try and go down onto these like two uh, metal rods there. I mean, they've got screws that hold this arm on and they're like wearing away, you know. But it's it's so much better. You can really like, you know, crack it around and uh, the brakes work really well. Um, I was I was really pleased with it, you know. But uh, I got that far and then the next thing, what battery do I use? Uh, where am I going to get a tank from? Uh, where am I going to get exhaust from? All, all that kind of thing. So looking round, looking round. Now, I, because I've got a buggy, the old MV16, um, I found this tank. Now, I don't know what I had eyes of doing, but this should have like a flip top lid. So there, there should be a flip top lid on there, but I'd cut it off for some reason uh, for another project, whatever. So I thought, how can I kind of save this tank? Because if you look, it kind of fits in really nice. So I managed to uh, put a threaded insert into the tank and then I made a new lid up uh, and I've got a lot of rubber washer in there. And again, I've had to put this on a little plate you can see under there because I wanted to keep all this all these bars and everything and you know all the screws were in the way and I had to get the right height on it and stuff like that but you know not not terrible uh, it was quite good fun doing it um, so we got that in so the next thing was you know a receiver battery so I found this battery because it's quite slim it's a 7.4 battery um, does the job uh, and it doesn't get in the way and the exhaust well this exhaust here is the original mb16 buggy exhaust but it normally comes down obviously in the car and goes along the side um i had that came with the engine i believe and this exhaust came with the engine um but it was like a side exit exhaust um and all the apes you see running on the telly and on videos and things they all come out the back so i had to kind of make this little alley tube and I put it from there and it goes right under the wing and it comes out the back lovely. So it kind of looks quite quite good. Um, yeah, it's, it's a transform model. Uh, I would really like, what I'm trying to look for at the moment, um, I forget what DP the gears are now, but I'm looking for uh, an, some more gears so I can play around with the gearing. Uh, maybe get a little bit higher gearing because, you know, it does scream a bit. Um, but it, it's transformed the model, you know. It's like something totally, totally different now to um, to what it was. It was something that's probably sat on my shelf for like, I don't know, maybe two years, something like that. I can't remember really when I bought it. Um, but I'll tell you what, the ties ain't going to last long. But um, it's good fun. Um, and especially like with the suspension now and a bit more weight, you can actually uh, drive it around a lot better. So... Let me just see if I can get it running. Uh, if I can find my glow somewhere, my glow igniter. Oh, there it is. Right. I shape for the best. You know what nitro's like. Sometimes it's all right, and other times it isn't. Ooh, that look good. I'll just try and prime it. In my glow battery flat.
Okay, well I'm sitting out here now on a blue haze. Uh, a lovely spell of nitro in the morning. Um, so, as you can hear, it's quite a peppy little engine. Superb little engines they are. It's really hard to come by now. Um, they made such a, you know, a lovely little engine this because uh, Serio tried to make an engine like this in a mini inferno and that, that was rubbish. Uh, like I say, the Acme uh, 05 engine was rubbish. I think there's been a few more out of there, but this has got no maker's name on it. Um, the, the, you know, it came from Hobby King. I think they used to sell all the parts for it, but now it's like impossible to find anything. Um, if anyone out there knows who made this engine, it's an 07 that was put in the Turnergy MB16 buggies. An absolutely fantastic little buggy. Um, the only thing that let it down was it had plastic diff gears um, and they used to break and it had some very soft, um, like the diff gears actually inside. So, I mean, I've managed to get everything to kind of line up. You have two body clips on the back and you wouldn't know that's not standard, would you? you know, I'm very pleased with this little model. Um, I think kind of I've got to try and gear it up a little bit. But basically, uh, I can move the engine slightly one way or the other. I can move it back and forward. So I've got a lot of scope and, you know, I've only got to get a set of gears and I can alter that quite easily. But like you know at the moment, I've moved on to my truck, my four cylinder. Um, I've just put uh, a new uh, receiver battery in that. Uh, I've redone all the shocks. Um, I've made all new, uh, using up to date um, connect connectors on it. Because so I had some uh, Dean's connectors and Dean's connectors now are not what they used to be. They used to be very, very expensive and really good. Um, I don't know where they come from now, but you know, I've got that stage in the truck every now and again, the radio would stop working and you wiggle the Dean's connectors and it comes on again. Now, if any of you have seen that truck going, that L400, you wouldn't want that to run away, would you? I mean, God knows what it weighs, but you just would not want that to run off, you know, the damage it would do and it could hurt someone's like So today I sat down with my soldering iron, I changed all the connectors on it, new wires, shortened them, because, like I said before, it was really just my test bed, and I was going to make another chassis, but it kind of went together quite well. Um, and yeah, you know, it's kind of a lovely thing now. Uh, seems pretty reliable. Hoping to get it again tomorrow, but the forecast is like rain forever and ever uh, from now on. So I don't know if I will get out. I want to get on my lossy bike again, because I've got the um, nice alley wheels on it. Um, you know, so it all depends on the weather if I can get some more video. And if I do get out, I'll take this little thing out and you can have a look at it screaming around. But I, I think you'll like it. Even it's low geared, I think you'll just love the, en you know, the engine and what it sounds like and where it goes. It's a lot of fun. So anyway, guys, I better sign off now. Um, I'm out of breath for trying to start that engine. Um, yeah, I've got this blood pressure problem at the moment. Uh, and it seems to be, I've got medication and God knows what else for it, but I seem to be a little bit out of breath all the time, but, um, I, you know, I'll carry on. <laughs> I'm okay. So anyway, guys, uh, hope to see you in the next video. I don't know what it got to be. I've got some good ideas. Um, I've got an engine and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, look out at my channel, uh, subscribe if you want to, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.